Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Project Zomboid. You have hereby been informally introduced. Allow me to make this even less formal. Get ready to fight truckloads of zombies. I mean boatloads. I mean container ship loads. I'm talking clearing whole entire cities, hitting 120 on the freeway, pumping up those muscles, gearing up, and read. Acquire knowledge through practice. Regain strength through patience. Maintain greatness through perseverance. Become monkey and simultaneously be monk. Project Zomboid has some incredibly humanoid features, such as the very human 200 degree horizontal vision, meaning you can never see who is behind you, and frequent internal misinputs during vital scenarios and everyday life. Usually, whenever developers say their game is super realistic, it's most likely an exaggeration or even a lie. But not in Project Zomboid. When you carry too much weight, all your character movements slow down, and the overexertion will damage your body. If you run carelessly in a forest, uneven grounds, or even a nicely kept backyard, your character might just take a bite out of the soil. When you hang around corpses too long, your character gets sick. If you are well fed and healthy, you handle physically demanding tasks better. If you don't occupy yourself enough, spend too much time alone, or face lots of dire situations, your character will get bored or even depressed. The day after working out, yes. you will experience muscle soreness, irritating your character and impairing their physical abilities. There is much more, but I will mention those later. Project Zomboid offers three different kinds of playstyles. Apocalypse mode, where your main focus is to survive and avoid combat with your weakened character against strengthened zombies, which will be difficult yet tempting because it is intended for players who like to be punished. And I know your kind. Survivor mode, a complete opposite of Apocalypse, as your character is now on steroids and the zombies are debuffed to the power level of an average Kensington, Philadelphia resident. And last but not least, Builder Mode. A more relaxed experience, emphasizing looting, farming, and building. The zombies are substantially weaker and their population is low. However, the loot is scarce and your clothes and stats degrade faster. By the way, I lied. There is a fourth option called Custom Sandbox. In here you can manually adjust all your details of your scenario to your liking. This is also the option I choose the most. Your boy needs that starter kit. Because I can't be stuck in a house with three zombies and the only thing I have to fight for my life with is a can of soup. Some adjustables in the sandbox mode are months since the start of the apocalypse, zombie count, zombie distribution, day length, starting time, water and electricity availability, house alarm frequency and entrance security, food spoilage rate, crop behavior, weather patterns, event frequencies, and many, many more. The very last words you read before going into your world are this is how you died. It sounds mean, but please, take them seriously. There is no grace period. If you spawn, check your surroundings and look for weapons immediately. Spawning in a house does not equal safety, because it probably isn't yours. In other words, there is a high chance of stranger danger. If you're met with an indoor encounter right off the bat and you do not have a starter kit, Shit, man, I'm sorry. Another possibility could be that you spawn in a police or fire station. You are guaranteed to be near good weapons, but you're not guaranteed the privilege of accessing them because the entire building is occupied by United States citizens who couldn't afford basic healthcare. You could also spawn in a store in the storing area. If so, run. Now, based on the zombie games that you are probably used to playing, the most logical thing here seems to be sprinting to the police station, getting all the guns, shooting all the zombies, clearing the area, and taking your time to loot everything around you as you freely explore the area. Afterwards, you carefully plan your next move. What would be a good place to build my base? Where can I find the essential resources that I'm currently lacking? Where's the erotica store? This is a very solid strategy. If you thought of something along these lines, I'm proud of you. However, one small issue. You're gonna grab your gun, aim, and miss. Congratulations! You are now attracting the entire area. And Filthy Frank over there is still alive and kicking. Think fast. What is your next move? Reload? Ah, yikes. That's a skill. That's gonna cost you precious seconds. And for what? To miss again? Here's an idea. Flip that shit around and start pistol whipping them in the head. Gun handles are pretty hard, right? Correct. But so is the melee in this game. And your short blunt skill is at zero. Fuck, boy. Congratulations! You just found out how you died. This game is more so about despair than it is about survival. As if you're directing a movie for your own death. Huh? Testicular torsion. If this, for any reason, upsets you and you feel like not playing this game anymore, go ahead, play your brain-dead shoot-and-run games. 
I won't judge you, but the world will know what you did. So, for the brave who don't cower at inconvenience, I suggest you keep watching. Now, my based and alpha audience, this is where you get familiar with your skill tree. For every skill in your skill tree, you can gain experience by performing actions related to that skill. You may believe this, or you may not. When you level up your skills, hold it! You get better at them! Yeah! And literally, all it takes to level up a skill is to do it! You can start as small as you can imagine. Dismantle some wooden furniture to become a better carpenter. Screw about on some TVs and lamps to become a better electrician. Work on some cars to become a better mechanic. Work metal to get better at metal working. Same goes for combat. Use axes in combat to get better at handling axes, short or long. I recommend it because it's strong. Use metal bars or baseball bats to get better at long blunts. Use hammers and rolling pins to get better at short blunts. Use swords or machetes to get better at long blades. Stab them with knives to become a true London Giza. Hit them with a spear if you feel like it. Personally, I wouldn't. And maintenance, I don't know what it is and I'm not gonna look it up. For the amount of XP you get for your skill tree, the quality of your actions matter. Clean hits and shots deal more damage than sloppy ones, thus killing zombies faster, which means you get more XP per swing or shot. This also saves energy, which is crucial, but I'll get to that later. Pinky promise. Good starting weapons for maximizing early XP gain in combat practice are shotguns and axes slash baseball bats. Respectively, shotguns have a wide bullet spread and are close range weapons, so your chance of hitting a zombie with each shot is very high. There is a big reason as to why this is so important, but again, I'll get to that. Plus, you're probably one of those shotgun spammers in the early Call of Duties. I know you're kind. Axes and baseball bats deal great damage when you time and coordinate your swings correctly, and, thanks to their length, allow you to compensate for whiffing by either pushing back zombies or running away without immediately getting asked for spare chains by the locals. Getting the hang of melee fighting is quite tricky, but doable. It just takes a little time and a little effort. I myself went through counted 15 existential crises, communally known as respawns, before getting a decent hang of it. The trick is to, again, think of what would work if you were actually face-to-face -face with Margaret Thatcher. I mean, a, a zombie. <laughs> Same shit, really. Margaret Thatcher is dead! First, look directly at the target. I prefer to place my cursor a little behind them. Then, swing with the outermost part of your weapon. So time your click once they are about to reach that point and then BOOM! Oh, he needs some milk! Now, as for American back to school essentials, to practice aiming with weapons that aren't shotguns, such as handguns and rifles, it is best to set up targets in an area where you can shoot freely without attracting hordes of grimace shakers. If your character spawns with level zero aiming, you're gonna shoot like you're looking through a kaleidoscope. It is a natural board skill issue. So please, fucking practice, as it's impressively insufferable the way your character moves around with a firearm. Like a dad trying to play Black Ops 2 who keeps looking at his controller mid-confrontation. In my mind, I like to differentiate the skill tree in two different branches, being training and learning. In my perspective, passive, combat, agility, and firearm are a matter of practice and training, whilst crafting and survivalist are a matter of research and learning, thus belonging in the latter. For the latter, there are plentiful resources available, spread across the map and in the form of books, tapes, and magazines. Reading books of a certain level for a certain skill takes roughly 10 minutes of real time, and once fully read, triples the amount of XP you will acquire from that point on within that level for all actions performed for a set craft. If you do manage to get all your handyman skills up to a full level 10, you might finally be able to not get yelled at by your dad for holding the flashlight a full 3.4 nanometers away from the exact spot he wants it to be in. The best times to read books are at night if your character can't sleep or is recovering and requires a physical break. You could also do it in the middle of a fight, but that would be unwise. I understand the temptation. I mean, hey, knowledge is power, but death is eternal and resets all your skills to zero. And if that sounds exhausting, <laughs> yeah, you're right, it is. But you don't have to rebuild all your skills from scratch every time. This is where the character builder comes in. Here you can select your previous profession, which will grant you specific perks from the start of the game. Some occupations speak for themselves, like carpenter, electrician, engineer, metal worker, mechanic, doctor, farmer, and chef. They boost your skill tree as the name sees fit, sometimes with additional benefits that come from work experience. For example, next to carpenter's carpentry boost, you also get a short blunt skill, because they're used to working with hammers. And doctors, next to their first aid boost, also get a short blade skill, because they're used to working with scalpels to perform surgeries and collect foreskin. Other jobs provide a mix of abilities, like police officer, giving you the abilities of an American, chef, so you cook a dami, farmer, so you can just distance yourself from all the bullshit again, a lonely existence, but it's honest work, burger flipper, 
Yeah. Park ranger, granting you the skills every 28-year-old boy scout swears they possess. Construction worker, good for close combat and strength. Fire officer, all-round solid job considering physical abilities. Security guard, good for stealth, quick escapes, and better night vision. Burglar, don't worry, just stay right where you are. Repairman, instantly making you a 50-year-old father of four. Fisherman, or as they call me in the streets, bank robber. Veteran, a gun freak powerhouse without fear of anything. Cool class. Nurse, like a doctor, but fast. Lumberjack, make that axe body spray your brain with a single hit. And fitness instructor, will try to sleep with your wife. And for those who want to be hyper-realistic, I suggest the following. Download a first-person mod, install a VR adapter, and then select unemployed. The character builder system is based around points. You can spend your points on positive and negative traits. If you choose positive traits, they cost you points but grant you special perks. If you choose negative traits, they grant you points and handicap you. Depending on the quality and the amount of traits and skills already given by your occupation, you're either going to be left with some points for additional skills or forced to compensate by adding handicaps. The impact that the trait has on your character determines its value. For instance, driving and reading speed have little impact on your balance, while great strength and loss of senses have a very high value. An example, one of my first characters was as strong as an ox and would one hit zombies like a Mexican dad with a belt, but in return, he was morbidly obese, making him clumsy, slow, and my favorite of them all, take more fall damage. Truly an art imitates life moment. Carefully craft your ideal character depending on what your preferred playstyle is or how many people you're playing with, which is probably zero, so don't even bother. If you want to be a big fighter man, go for something like lumberjack or construction worker. If you prefer something all round, then park ranger and fire officer are solid. Or say you want to delve deeper into a certain craftsman skill like carpentry, metalworks, or mechanics, then choose sad occupation to instantly spawn with the skills needed to work on basic projects. I for one highly recommend starting with a kit that gives some kind of carpentry boost as it is quite essential in the early and mid game and leveling up by dismantling a dead person's entire property not only feels good i mean feels bad but is also boring unrewarding and so goddamn slow you can feel yourself getting older all right gameplay. I want you to understand this more than anything I'll say in this video. This is real life. Your actions have consequences and the most important thing is sound. Oh, if you make any sound, you will attract zombies, no matter the place, no matter the time. Fortnite battle pass. I just shit out my ass. <laughs> hey, bro. Yeah? Fortnite battle pass. I just shit out oh my ass. ass. Wait. Oh. The more noise you make, the more zombies you will attract. And the less, the less, you feel me? Sometimes, the amount of noise you'll make will depend on your character traits and skills. These, for example. Which means that a lightweight character tends to be nimbler than an obese. And a clumsy character is more likely to attract unwanted attention than a graceful one. In the beginning, I found it to be very logical to sprint to my destinations because it's fast and I like that. What I didn't like were the friends I made along the way. Forcing open a window by breaking the lock makes little to no noise, but it takes more time and not all windows can be opened from the outside. However, you can also smash the glass, which is a lot faster. But if you do decide to do that, you are not only guaranteed to attract nearby zombies, but you can also cut yourself on the shards when climbing through. If you wish to be more successful in quietly opening windows, consider becoming a burglar. Just just stay right where you are. Climbing a barbed wire fence is a hell of a lot faster than walking around it, and the noise can be counteracted if you consider some stealthy trades. Unfortunately, no trade can save you from the noise generated by shooting a zombie with a shotgun, as it will attract all of his happy little tree friends in a 100 meter radius. So, be a man, use your fists, or be a woman, Speaking of driving, be careful of looting cars near hordes of zombies. It may surprise you to hear that it's not necessarily the engine of the car that attracts the whole block, it's the doors. Because for reasons, your character can't close doors any quieter than a Mediterranean man with a bad day. Also, however nimble and graceful your character may be, common household practices like slamming garage doors with a sledgehammer see no benefit from your tippity toes. You can sneak kill zombies by crouching up from behind and smashing them in the Dimsdale Dimmodome. Or if you are carrying a short blade weapon, British people, pay attention, you can kill them instantly with a backstab or a jaw stab.
This makes zero noise and kills instantly when done correctly. Pro tip. Don't give me a pro tip. Eh? Wait till the free hand of your character raises up, then left click and start the teabag. These sneak kills can be crucial in semi-packed spaces or areas as zombies move in hurts and are attracted by sounds of other zombies. So if it takes you multiple hits to kill any zombie, you're likely to attract nearby walkers from the noise that generates. Also, accidentally pressing Q as you're stealthing your way through a situation and attracting the whole fucking state of Ohio sucks so much and all it takes to solve this problem is to replace the keybind. But I won't. Just like in real life, sometimes you gotta face the consequences of someone else's actions. Years ago, Richard wanted to increase his home security, so he made this deal with a shady home security company and had the installations done. Fortunately, yet anticlimactically, he never got to see his purchase in action. Though by now Richard is probably dead, he can rest peacefully, knowing that his intruder alarm system works and it's attracting the whole neighborhood. Or can he? Because according to my valuable source, which I will not name, Richard was tricked by his local government into turning his home into a sound source for the United States Emergency Alert System without financial compensation. And it's not just a house. His outdoor garage box, of which he misleadingly let the door open, presumably for people of the night like me, also has a perfectly working intruder alert system. And the entire town would love to have a closer look. Have fun escaping this one, because even though you might outdrive the zombies, the government is never satisfied. You know too much. Now repent, as you are tormented by a helicopter that follows you around for as long as it has eyes on you, constantly attracting damn near every zombie in the entire game. To avoid this helicopter, move to a different location as fast as you can and keep all doors, windows and curtains shut. Uh. If you fail to do this and your base is not 100% zombie proof, then prepare to face the consequences. Remember, in the end, it doesn't matter how hungry the zombies might be, the true danger remains the United States and their appetite for conflict. In short, silence is the greatest preventer of danger. I learned that Project Zomboid punishes you for treating the game like a game. Let me emphasize this again. Don't do anything in here you wouldn't do in real life because you will get punished as if it were. So like in real life, another thing to consider is your health. Your character can get sick, depressed, infected, panicked, dehydrated, starved, mortally wounded, overburdened, and even eaten. To make sure you don't catch any infections or diseases, you have to keep your body, clothes, and even your frequently visited spaces clean. Such as your room. Yes, I know you're watching this with a bunch of cups and plates next to you. Clean that shit up. Staying healthy also means maintaining a healthy BMI. Because if you're the fat, then you're not just slow and quickly exhausted, but you also take fall damage when climbing large fences. I've said this before, but I want to re-emphasize just how funny I think this is. Also, very important, your mental health. Keep yourself occupied at all times or indulge in interesting material. Stay around your friends when doing multiplayer, get some vitamin D and keep your base safe and clean. Because if you don't, you might just become depressed. And even America's best and most advanced treatment options can reduce but never stop the sad. Zombie encounters and sneak peek previews of the pearly gates will make your character panic unless of course you choose a trait that counteracts this panicked characters become sloppy as extreme panic reduces accuracy damage and critical hit chance plus for added realism you arise quicker without the temporary debuff of dehydration your character can also fall victim to stress reducing your damage output and if not managed leads to unhappiness remedies include but are not limited to occupying yourself watching entertainment doing crossword puzzles reading some <laughs> and smoking a ciggy or two make sure to stay hydrated this is hard enough to do in real life on its own i know but bear with me you can collect water from sinks bathtubs <laughs> toilets or find it prepackaged. the latter is actually pretty useful because you can save up these water bottles and refill them anywhere you're gonna need at least two bottles of water to carry with you at all times if you're gonna go about on a journey and while it may seem that being thirsty or dehydrated doesn't really affect your character's actions again just remember that the dildo of consequences rarely arrives lubed being well fed is a crucial state to be in staying well fed means staying healthy as well as maintaining your strength meaning you can fight and carry weight to the best of your abilities which can make quite a difference when you're carrying all you can and all of a sudden your capacity drops by two points speaking of being overloaded it sucks there ain't no pills for this this shit's fucking limiting to increase your carrying capacity you gotta get stronger but again 
It's a super realistic mechanic forcing you to make critical decisions on what loot you're going to bring with you or not. Say you find a whole closet full of guns and ammo. You simply cannot carry all of it at once without repercussion. When you exceed your carrying capacity, you are literally having your hands too full to move around the way you want to, which forcibly face your veins through your forehead. So for example, be careful when moving generators, because calculated they weigh about one fuck ton and will hurt your poor lower back if you travel too much with them. You ain't the Hulk. Take care of yourself. Unless, of course, you are, and if so, you know, my fault. Make sure to treat your injuries and allow them to fully heal before straining your body again. The game is not shy to let you know exactly how fucked up you are, so take it seriously. If you get a flesh wound, disinfect the hell out of it. Keep your body and clothes clean and maintain your bandages. You can take scratches and lacerations, but once you get bitten, it's over. So do something fun before your inevitable death, like realizing that the grind don't stop. So get out there, get naked, and work yourself to death. One time I got bitten by a zombie while I was playing with a buddy of mine, and me not wanting to die a failure again, thought of the big horde of zombies right outside our base and figured, yeah, I can take them. I took off all my clothing, ran full speed between the hordes, and pressed Q more times than I have drawn quality breaths in my entire life. After successfully leading the zombies away from the base, I got a sudden rush of dopamine. I started bearing cock juking the zombies left and right, celebrating as I went. <laughs> Psych! Oh! Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 oh! Until I gave in and switched teams. Rest in peace, big guy. I'm not exactly sure why I have the tendency to strip when I feel the grace of death, but I do know that I will do it again. Anyway, if you get sick, eat nutritious foods and rest plenty. Don't eat the lard. It has happened to me twice now that my character suddenly got anxious, depressed, pained, and tired all at once for literally no reason at all. I didn't turn upon death, had no physical injuries, and my internal status was normal. I suppose I was simply diagnosed with death and was refused an explanation. But in hindsight, it might have had to do something with the rotting corpses. You never know. You can siphon gas from cars with gas canisters. This is a very handy feature that doesn't require any prior skill, and since cars are common, it's easy to stock up on gas virtually anywhere on the map, especially in the towns. So, if you take good care of your car and manage your gas stock well, you can use a single car for as long as you would like, but usually, I don't. My preferred vehicle, especially convenient in the early game, is any kind of van. <laughs> Officer, I, I swear it's not what it sounds like. I, I was taken out of context. They, they go fast, seat up to six people, and have a lot of storage space. This is ideal for carrying necessary and heavy items like generators, gas, and mechanical tools, or other heavy things like the weight of your sins, while still having plenty of space to move a lot of loot. You can spawn in Maldro, Riverside, Rosewood, and West Point. You might wonder, do these places really exist in the real world? Barely. I looked up information on Maldro on the internet, and I can conclude that this city is home to at least some people, and most definitely one cop that keeps appearing on Google Images. But there is something more going on. You see, the zombie disease in this game is called the Nox Infection. And what do we see on the real map of Maldro? Nox budget car sales and Fort Knox Lodge. I'm just saying. One town is a little bigger than the other, and all provide a few unique facilities, apart from the standard neighborhoods, being upper class, upper middle, and the other 98% of hardworking Americans. The first thing you will notice when you spawn is nothing. There looms an initial darkness in all the places and directions your character has not yet seen. All right, let's see where we are. Ah. Oh. Penis. Like the house you spawn in, the fence you haven't seen the other side of, or the trees and buildings you can't see past. Whenever you have seen something, your character will remember what it looked like, but it can't see the changes unless directly gazed upon again. This also counts for your direct vision, which doesn't allow you to see what is directly behind you, because we're not owls. Our necks can do that more than once. In the small starting towns, this is already quite the challenge, but it is nothing compared to the horror that is the big capital. Louisville, Kentucky, the big city, with signs of the outbreak showing everywhere. The very moment you hit the fenced borders of Louisville, the vibe is different. From the trash laying around everywhere, to the refuge camps, to the gigantic landmarks and structures, this is something else. Not even to mention the earth-shaking, hell-bending amount of zombies. But with great risk comes great reward. So make the most of your visit, because it can be over in a flash at any time and any place. But I will leave that for you to explore. Because right now, Louisville is the single most challenging place in the entire game. And I wish to spoil as little as I can. But I will let you know that the next updates are going to be big. With new places to visit, more things to explore, unique NPC interactions, and even animals. Project Zomboid is getting some really cool additions to the 
the game. So stay tuned for further updates. And with that, I highly encourage you to try Project Zomboid for yourself, preferably with friends. It's only 20 bucks on Steam and it is absolutely worth it. I am not sponsored, I'm just very passionate. Anyway, that's it. I thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the support on the previous video. And as of right now, I'm already busy working on my next case study. Bye-bye.